wonderful Sunday afternoon. And uh, I hope and pray that you will have a wonderful week. And if you're visiting with us, uh, we're glad to have you. We've got somebody all over from Ohio with us Amen. Let's go to the Lord and pray. Brother Bill, I'm asking you to pray for 
you're standing on one of two things. You're standing upon the sand, Jesus said, or you're standing upon that solid rock. You know what? Either way, the storm is going to come. That's right. Amen? Yeah, that's right. Either way, the storms are going to come in your life. And if you're standing on the, on the sand, do you know what? Things are going to come crashing down. That's right. But if your life is rooted and founded upon that solid rock, which is Jesus Christ, I tell you that you'll be able to preach right on the roof of the world. You'll be able to stand firm, stand still, and see the salvation of the Lord. Amen. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. This next song is called, Yes, I Will. We're going to preach right on the roof of the Amen. Keep faith in the Lord. Amen. 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 Amen.
came to the, the baby shower this afternoon, the ladies that came, the men came to the baby shower this afternoon, and uh, you loved on Taylor and, and Jared and, and gave them gifts. I, I want to say thank you, and I appreciate you as a church supporting uh, these that, that get married or these that are having babies. Uh, we're not going to, we don't do it with our second, third, and fourth, and fifth, and sixth babies, amen, but we're going to try and do it with our first baby, amen. And uh, so we, we thank you for that faithfulness to give unto them uh, today and to love upon them. I want to say that as a pastor. Thank you very much for being in church uh, in that matter. Um, but tonight uh, we're going to get into Joshua chapter 14 is where we are going. And we're going to continue in this little mini-series that I told you that we we're starting this morning titled Faith of Our Fathers. Amen. Uh, this morning we looked at the mistakes, we learned from the mistakes of, of a father of yesteryear known as Brother Lot, amen, and just like any of us, whether you're a dad or your mother or just a son or daughter, whoever the case may be, we have all made mistakes, amen. we've all failed them significantly, and, but the thing of it is, we neither wallow in those mistakes or we can learn from them. I want to encourage you to learn from the mistakes of yourself, learn from the mistakes of others, so you don't have to make those same mistakes. So we learned this morning about how Lot moved his family toward Sodom, amen. He was more concerned about their earthly prosperity than their spiritual condition. Do not, uh, never forsake of your family's spiritual condition for earthly prosperity. Yeah. The things of this world are going to pass away. Amen. The things of this life, we, are, we're, we're going to leave them behind. The faith benefits your family's life, not only in this life, but in the life to come. Uh, we talked about how he was willing to sacrifice his family. He was willing to sacrifice his two virgin daughters and give them over uh, to the mob that was outside of his house. Uh, and uh, we talked about how you can sacrifice your family for your desires or for uh, the, the almighty dollar. We also talked about how he a lot allowed drunkenness to cause him to do things uh, that were unspeakable, to do things that he would not normally do. I want him, I, I'm going to re-emphasize with that uh, this evening. Uh, you believe it or not, I watched, I, that, I ain't going to say you ain't going to where I said you go, I'll leave that alone. But I want to re-emphasize what I said this morning about uh, in Ephesians where it speaks about don't be drunk uh, with uh, wine, but it says be filled with the Spirit. Amen. Amen. He is comparing wine and the Holy Spirit. One of them takes away self-control, and one of them forgives self-control. It is God's desire for us to be self-controlled. That is a fruit of the Spirit, and anything that takes away from that, whether it be marijuana, whether it be Jack Daniels, or a little red wine, or a little white wine, or whatever it may be, when we get under that influence, we will do things we do not know, would not know the difference. It's God's will for God's people to be of temperance and of self-control. And substances that take out away don't need to be a part of our life. Amen. So we learned some things from Brother Lot, and tonight we're going to look at another father of yesteryear. He is one of my favorite characters in the Bible, and his name was Caleb. Amen. If you've got your Bibles, Joshua chapter 14, we're going to look at verse 6. And go. Amen. If you're there, say amen. Amen. It says this. Then the children of Judah came to Joshua in Gilgal, and Caleb, the son of, uh, of that man right there, amen, he said to him, You know the word which the Lord said to Moses. Look what he said. You know the word which the Lord said to Moses, the man of God, concerning you and me in Kadesh Barnum. I was 40 years old when Moses, the servant of your Lord, sent me from Kadesh Barnea to spy out the land, and I brought back word to him as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren who went up with me made the heart of the people melt, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. So Moses swore on that day, saying, Surely the land where your foot has trodden shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed the Lord my God. And now, behold, the Lord has kept me alive, and he said, 
of these 45 years ever since the Lord spoke his word to Moses while Israel wandered in the wilderness. And now here I am this day, 85 years old, 45 years later since we stood at the edge of the promised land. As yet I am strong as this day as on the day that Moses sent me. How many of you would like to be as strong at 85 as you were when you were 40? Amen. Amen. That was a blessing right there. It says this, just as my strength was then, so is my strength for war now, both for going out and for coming in. Verse 12 says, Now therefore give me this mountain of which the Lord spoke in that day. For you heard in that day of how the Anakin, that's giants, were there, that the cities were great and fortified. It may be that the Lord will be with me, and I shall be able to drive them out uh, as the Lord has said. Verse 13, And Joshua blessed Caleb and gave him Hebron, uh, gave Hebron to Caleb, the son of uh, that man right there, Jephthah, uh, as an inheritance. Hebron therefore became the inheritance of Caleb, uh, to this day, because he wholly followed the Lord God of Israel, and the name of Hebrew formerly was uh, Kerjath Araba. Araba is the greatest man among the Anakin. The land had rest from war. Raven, let's stop there and pray over the reading of God's word. Father, one more time we come before you tonight in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. For the privilege, it's truly a privilege to be in your house. Lord, to sing praises to you, to enter into your presence uh, with worship, God. And it's a wonderful time, God, that we get to break the bread of life. And I just ask for your anointing to rest upon me tonight, Lord. God, I pray that your anointing, your touch would rest upon the ears and the hearts and the minds of this congregation. Lord, to receive this soul. May it be fertile. May it be broken up and ready to receive the seed that we are going to sow tonight in the mighty name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen and amen. This morning I titled the sermon, Learning from Their Mistakes. Tonight I titled this message, Mountain Claiming Faith. Amen. Uh, we see Jesus speak later about mountain moving faith, but Brother Caleb had mountain claiming faith. Amen. Uh, but uh, he, Brother Caleb is one of my favorite characters in the Bible. Him along with Joshua. Uh, I don't know why in all of my life, all of my life, and I don't know why, for some reason, if someone calls me the wrong name, the wrong name, do you know what it is? It's always Josh. I don't know if I look like a Josh. I don't know. My great aunt, my great aunt, daddy's aunt used to call me Josh. And I used, I'm telling you how often people call me Josh. I used to think I had a long lost brother that they didn't tell me about. <laughs> they have. They still ain't told me about it. But that's how much people would call me the name Josh. And, and I always related to Joshua. Well, amen. But uh, one of my favorite characters, or two of them, are Joshua and Brother Caleb here. It's interesting to me as we look at the story of Caleb that at this point in time in Scripture, he is 85 years old. And the Bible says that he was just as fit, he was just as strong, and he was just as determined as he was at 40 years of age. And here at 85 years old, he declares, give me this mountain. He was ready for another battle. He was ready to claim his inheritance that he had been told that he would receive. And Caleb, without a doubt, was a man of faith. Not only was he a man of faith, but we know that he had children. He has daughters that received certain things from him. He was a man of faith that we can learn from, and I know that his daughters, his children, had to learn from as well. You might say, Pastor, why are you preaching on men? Why are you preaching on uh, fathers of yesteryear like Caleb or like Lot? Because I want the men that are in here to know how important you are to the family. Yeah. Men are important unto the home. Whether you're a husband, whether you're a daddy, whether you're a grandfather, you are important unto home, to the home. And it's so sad today to see fathers and husbands MIA, amen. They are missing in action. And men, I want you to know you have a greater impact on the family and on the home than you think. Consider this for just a moment. The Bible tells us that a father can either bless or curse their family. 
A father can bring a blessing or a curse to their family. I want you to listen to Deuteronomy chapter 5, verse 9. You shall not bow down to them nor serve them. For I, the Lord your God, am a jealous God, visiting the iniquity of the fathers upon the children to the third and the fourth generations of those who hate me. Now hold on just a minute. The, the iniquity of the fathers will be visited, goes to the third and the fourth generation. Now later, we read this in Ezekiel chapter 18. Listen. He says, as for his father, because he cruelly oppressed, robbed his brother with my violence, and did what is not good among his people, behold, he shall die for his iniquity. Yet you say, why should the son not bear the guilt of the father? Because the son has done what is lawful and right, and has kept my statutes and observed them. Amen. He shall surely live. The soul who sins shall what? Die. The son shall not bear the guilt of the father, nor the father bear the guilt of the son. The righteousness of the righteous shall be upon himself, and the wickedness of the wicked shall be upon himself. You say, Pastor, why did you point those things out? Because first of all, I want to make this very clear to you. No one else is responsible for your sin except you. You are the one that is going to stand before God, and you are going to give an account for your life. Amen. You're going to give an account. If you are not saved in here tonight, you're going to stand before the Lord, and your works are going to declare that you are not going to heaven, and he's going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. If you are saved, you're going to stand at a different judgment and be the judgment seat of Christ, and he's not going to judge you based on your sin. Why? Because that was settled the moment that you call on Christ. But he is going to judge you based on what you have done with Christ in this life. We will individually stand before the Lord. You are responsible for your sin. Amen. Look at your neighbor real quick and point out, you are responsible for your sins, not me. Amen. I don't care how much you love your husband. You know what? That ought to set some people free in here for your children. If you've got grown children, listen to me right now. You're not responsible for their sins or what they've done. They got out from your house. They don't live with you anymore. They're of age. They're making their own decisions. And those decisions, they're responsible for. Amen? But listen to but don't miss this. We are responsible for our own sins. However, somebody say however. Our sins will affect those directly who are closest. Our sin, you're not responsible. I'm not responsible for his sins, and he's not responsible for my sins. That's what Ezekiel said. Right. However, we need to understand that our sins will affect those that are around us. What do you mean by that, Pastor? Well, let me put it like this. Can a man, can a man commit sexual immorality or adultery? And it not destroy his entire family. Right. Think about it. Can a man, preach it on me, can a man be a mean drunk or a drug addict and it not have an effect on his children or his wife or his parents? Amen. We've got some children, some folks here that got, that got children that are bound by addictions and struggle. You're not responsible for your, their choices. However, you are affected by their sin. You are affected and burdened and broken and heartbroken over their sins. Amen. And we need to understand we're responsible for your own sins. However, your family will pay a heavy price for sins that are not theirs. If, we, if a man or a mother is a greedy workaholic, and they place their family second to the Almighty Dollar. Is, is it not going to affect their children? Yet? Yes. You are responsible for your own sin, but it will affect everybody else. Yes, it can either bring a blessing to them or it can bring, a, if I will, a curse unto right. them. <coughs> They'll have to bear a burden for your sins. 
bring about your actions bring a curse or a blessing. Consider though the passage that we read tonight. Looking back at verse 9. It says this. Caleb quotes Moses. And he says Moses swore on that day. Saying surely the land where your foot has trodden. Oh, he is quoting Moses 45 years early. When they were standing at the promised land. Nobody else would go in except Joshua and Caleb. And Moses swore from the word of the Lord, Surely the land where your foot is trod shall be your inheritance and your children's forever, because you have wholly followed God, or you have wholly followed the Lord. What are you trying to say by that, Pastor? Because Caleb was willing to wholly follow the Lord, the Bible says his children were blessed with a rich inheritance forever. Amen. Not only were they blessed with a rich inheritance being a piece of land in the nation of Israel, but they were blessed with a legacy of faith in Jehovah God. Amen. Can I tell you something? That is the greatest thing that you can leave your family, your children, your grandchildren. It is a legacy of faith. Amen. I was able to stand on the stage and preach my mother's funeral because of the faith of Sister Julie that she had deposited into my life. Amen. The greatest thing that you can do is deposit faith into the lives of your children and your grandchildren and your nieces and, and those that are around you. Faith would not only bless them in this life, but in the life to come. Amen. Because, because Caleb was willing to wholly follow the Lord. It was not only a blessing to him, but it was a blessing to his children. That's right. You see where I'm coming from? That you can, in your life, you can either be a blessing to your family, or honestly, you can be a burden to your family. Right. You can either by serving the Lord and following the Lord and doing what is righteous and holy and following after Jesus, you can be a blessing to those that are in your family. But I want to remind you, you can also be a pain. Right? Yeah. Woo! Yeah, I just put it right on down to that. You can also be a burden to them. You say, well, my sin don't affect them. Yeah, it does. It affects your poor woman's heart. It affects your children's lives. You can be a blessing to somebody, or honestly, you can be a curse to them, so to speak. If I can put it like that. Which one are you tonight? I want to encourage you to be a person that instills faith in your family. Yeah. You know, one time, a, one time a pastor was invited to dinner in a home of a very wealthy man that lived in Texas. And after the meal, his father got up from the table with his family and he took the pastor out on the, uh, in the yard on a hill and he looked to the north and he pointed and he said, Pastor, you see all of those, of those old wells? He said, as far as you can see, he said, that's all of mine. Then he turned to the south and he said, Pastor, you see that real pretty forest and all them planted pine trees down there? He said, I own all that too. Then he turned to, to the east and he said, you see all those cattle out there? He said, there's a thousand head out there. He said, I don't ever want to own then he took the pastor and he pointed to the west. He said, you see that lake over there? It's stocked with all kinds of fish. He said, I own that too. And the man standing there, the father standing there, kind of a little, very proud of himself, just paused for a moment and he was waiting on the pastor to, to say something, to compliment on him. All of his earthly prosperity and achievements that he made, the pastor just took his hand and put it on his shoulder. And with the other hand, he just simply pointed up, upward towards heaven. And he said, how much do you own up there? And the man thought about it and he hung his head and he said, I never thought about that. Either. Sometimes we get so busy on looking to the north, the east, the west, and the south, that we forget to look up. Baby. I want to remind you what is most important is not just the things that are around you, but it's that which is up. Amen. Praise the Lord. You know what? We we have things here on this earth with our families, and, and we can buy them things and houses and money. We can get them all 
clothes in and there's nothing wrong with having possessions in, in this life. But you know what? We only get a short time to enjoy those things. Says the late man. Job talks about how this life is short and filled, filled with sorrow and it's soon cut off and we fly away. Right. And I tell you what, I want to go to a place where I don't have to worry about time anymore. Amen. I want to go to a place that I don't have to worry about separation or sickness or the sun setting or the day ending. I want to go to a place where I can spend eternity with all of you and with my family and it's going to be a wonderful time that will never end. Don't get so caught up on the things of earth you forget to look up. I want to encourage you to be a man to be a father, to be a husband, to be, to be a mother that instills faith in your family. Amen. Let's, let's get back to our brother Caleb. Look at verse 8. He said, Caleb says this of himself. He says, I wholly followed the Lord my God. Now, what's interesting about that statement, I wholly followed the Lord, it is said a total of six times about brother Caleb in the Bible. Six times that phrase or to, to somewhat of that phrase was said about Caleb. Caleb said it about himself. Moses said it about him. And even God said it about him. Note Numbers chapter 14 says this. But my servant Caleb, God speaking, because he has a different spirit in him, he has followed me fully, and I will bring him into the land where he went, and his descendants shall inherit <coughs> He followed me what? Fully. Amen. Now we see that six different times spoke about Caleb. That he followed the Lord wholly. He followed the Lord fully. Amen. Well what does that imply about Brother Caleb? It speaks about his faith in the Lord. Amen. And I want to share with you three things this evening about the faith of, of Brother Caleb. That he had the mountain claiming faith. The, the first one is this. Caleb had committed faith. Amen. Yeah. Caleb had committed faith. The Bible says that Caleb followed the Lord wholly. Amen. He followed him with all of his heart. He left nothing out and he held nothing back. Through the good and the bad, he was committed unto the Lord. Amen. I want you to think about this for just a minute about what brother Caleb. Imagine now, Caleb comes out of Egypt. Caleb comes out of Egypt. He's there and he sees the, the ten plagues that God brought on, e on Egypt. Caleb was there when they parted the Red Sea and they walked across on dry land. From the Red Sea they entered into the wilderness and they went to Mount Sinai. At Mount Sinai Moses goes up. The Lord comes down onto the mountain. And uh, they see the clouds and the thunder. They hear the voice of the Lord. It was actually right there that they actually celebrated the first Pentecost. So that's a whole other message. They celebrated it there after the Passover. Uh, but uh, they spend that time. They get the Ten Commandments. They get the law. They get to uh, receive direction from the Lord. They leave there and they move towards the Promised Land. When they get to the Jordan River... Moses sends in 12 spies, 12 spies. Caleb and Joshua were a part of that 12. They go in, and guess what? They find giants in the land. Ten of the, ten of the spies come back with the grapes, and two of them come back with the grapes. Amen? And the Bible says that because the people... Those ten spies complained, said, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it, we can't do it. The Bible says that the people, all the other people, <coughs> discouragement infected them as well. Do you know that discouragement, that's a little side note, do you know that discouragement and negativity and unbelief is catching, amen? Y'all think the coronavirus is contagious, amen? You think that sign is wrong, you, you got better, it's contagious, praise the Lord. She's not contagious, by the way, amen. She blamed, y'all get scared right now, amen. She blamed me for something I ain't giving her, amen. But, but you think that out of coronavirus is contagious, can I tell you something tonight? The discouragement and disbelief are contagious. Yeah. And because of those ten of complaining and saying, we cannot do it. The rest of the group said, we're not going in. That's right. 
we need to get committed unto his word. We need to be committed unto his word, what God has said. Right. You know what? In ministering and reaching out to lost people, talking to lost people, and I, you know, their response, they give this generic response. They say something like this, I have God in my heart. Yeah. Come on. I know the Lord loves me. <laughs> you ever heard a generic response, something like that? You're trying to witness to somebody about being saved and talking about sin. I know God is in my heart. And I've asked them, how do you know God is in your heart? You just tell me where you think that. You better be in line with His Word. Amen. Listen, listen to what I want to say. People say that, they say, well, I know I got God in my heart. Don't miss what I'm going to say. I want to get up here and make sure that I, I, I read it right. You're not following God, nor do you love Him, or nor do you have Him in your heart, if you don't love His Word. Amen. Folks, talk about commitment, committed faith. We need to be committed to Him. I'm going to we need commitment to that word. Yes, Lord. How do I know that? Look at what 1 John says. It's 1 John or John 14. John 14, 15. What did Jesus say? If you love me, keep my commandments. Yes, Lord. Listen to what 1 John chapter 2 said. It said, But whoso, whoever, keeps his word, Truly, the love of God is perfected in him, and by this we know that we are in him. Amen. Caleb had a commitment to God's word. God had told them to conquer, to enter the promised land, that place full of milk and honey. The ten would that they infected the rest of them, but Caleb was committed. He said, I'm going in. It might take five years, it might take it might take forty years, but I am going to be Amen. I want to encourage you to be committed yes, sons of God's word. I don't know matter whether it takes waiting, whether it takes uh, some loss of some earthly things, whether you got through the good or the bad, be committed unto God's word. Keep his word, amen. Don't just let the things of the word of God be optional to you. Well, I like this on page 235, but I don't like this on 1027. I don't like this over here. I'm going to leave that out. Oh, if you're going to commit yourself to the Lord and you want to commit yourself to serving Him, that means you're going to commit yourself to the Word. And that the cities were great and fortified, 
It may be the Lord is with me, and I shall be able to drive them out as the Lord said. Amen. What in the world made Caleb, 85 year old Caleb, what it made him have the idea that he could be a giant slayer? Amen. Caleb had confident faith in God's word. Yeah. Look at Joshua 14, verse 10. Now behold, Behold, the Lord has kept me alive as he said. These 45 years, ever since the Lord spoke this word to Moses, while Israel wandered in the wilderness, and now here I am this day, 85 years old. Listen to exactly what the Lord said in Deuteronomy chapter 1. And the Lord uh, God said, heard the sound of your words and was angry, and he took an oath saying, Surely not one of these men of this evil generation shall see the good land which I swore to give to their fathers, except Caleb. He shall see it, and him and his children I give the land which he will walk, because he wholly followed me. When they stood at the promised land, Caleb and Joshua, Moses, there, and all the rest of the, the Israelites, when they wouldn't go in, God got mad with them. Said you'll never enter in. Said you'll die in the wilderness, except for old Caleb and Joshua. He said Caleb is going to enter in. Amen. Caleb is going to enter in to that promise. He had to wait forty-five years on it. Forty years they wandered in the desert. Forty-five, within five years, uh, they began to fight and they war. But in all of that time, all of that time of waiting, Caleb placed his confidence in what God had said. Amen. Can you imagine every day? I believe Caleb got up every morning, and he had to remind himself of that promise that God gave him. Yes, Lord. He was committed unto the Lord. He was going to holy fight to wholly follow him, but also he was confident that God was going to fulfill what he said he was going to do. He believed with all of his heart by faith that he was going to enter into that promise just as God had said. And now at 85 years old, with all confidence, he says, give me this mountain. Amen. You know what we need in the house of God again is some folks with some confidence faith. Amen. Because I'm here tonight to tell you that our God is able to perform what he has said that he will do. Isaiah said that his word would not return void, but he would go forth and accomplish that which he has sent it to do. Amen. Folks, we need to have some confidence in here tonight. I believe that the devil is working overtime to distress and discourage the children of God. He's working overtime to discourage them and depress fathers and mothers and teenagers and you know one thing it is is because we get our mind off of what God has said. We listen to what the world said. We listen to what's going on on Fox News and on CNN and we see all these depressing, discouraging things and we get depressed and discouraged ourselves. But what we need to do is pick up the word of God. Caleb, see, reminded Joshua, you remember what God said? God said, I was going to have that. God said that I was going to enter in. God said that I would have an inheritance. Right. We need to get up yes, and remind ourselves of the promises of God in the Lord. Amen. Amen. Don't just, when you get discouraged and when you get defeated, can I tell you, that is not what God desires for your life. To get the new life. We're just going to make it through today. Come on. <laughs> You go, to, go to work defeated. You come home defeated. Uh, you go to bed discouraged. You get up discouraged. That's not what God has for you. God will perform His work. Have confidence in the promises of God. Amen. Have confidence in what God has said. We need men of God that's willing really to be confident in what God has said. Listen to me. Faith is not just some blind leap. Come on. But it's a deep settled conviction that God will do what he's promised. Yeah, amen. Faith is not just some blind leap. It's a deep settled conviction yes, Lord. that God will do what he said he's going to do. Right. 
Caleb had confidence. But he knew and believed God is going to do what he said that he's going to do. Hebrews chapter 11 says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for and evidence of things not seen. It's that confident faith that moves mountains and also claims mountains. The Bible says uh, there's no need for a man to come before the Lord in doubting and expect to receive anything. That's right. No need to open up your mouth and pray if you don't believe that you're going to receive it. He says because you already defeated that prayer when you have doubt in your mind. Amen. But we need to have confidence in what God has said that he's able to perform. Amen. That my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. I know he can meet my needs. I know that he can deliver my family from, from addictions and stronghold. I know he can open up doors for me to walk through. I know he can close doors for me to walk through. I know that he is leading me and goodness and mercy are following me all the days of my life. I'm holding to the promises of God and I'm confident that God will come through. Yes, Lord. Yes, he will. We need to have confidence. That's how you move mountains. That's how you claim mountains as Caleb did. Get the doubt out. You know what I'm saying? Get the lead out. Get the doubt out tonight. And have confidence in what God has said that he is going to do. We learn this from Brother Caleb. Not to get discouraged. Not to give up. But have confidence faith. Number three. I'll hurry and close. Number three. Caleb had courageous faith. Caleb had courageous faith. He had committed faith. He had confident faith. And Caleb had courageous faith. In his 85 years of living, he had, he had faced many obstacles. But in order to do so, he had to possess courageous faith. Think about it. First of all, Brother Caleb had to overcome grasshoppers. Grasshoppers. What do you mean by that, Pastor? The Bible says... That when those ten spies went into the promised land, they come back and their report was, we are, those big old giants are so big, we are grasshoppers in our own eyes. Right. He had to overcome grasshopper mentality. He had to overcome grasshopper mentality where people were saying themselves less than what they were. Can I say this, friend, there's always going to be naysayers in life. Right. There's always going to be people say it can't be done. You can't do this. You can't build that. But you'll never do this. You'll never accomplish that. You'll always have to face grasshopper mentality. Why are you doing that? Why, why are you trying to start that business? Why are you trying to start that ministry? Why did you quit your job to do this or to do that? Uh, you always have to overcome grasshopper mentality. second thing that he had to overcome was this, the actual giants that was in the land. There were giants in the land of Canaan. And Caleb had the courage to fight in the face of those giants and to be victorious. Every one of us in here tonight have to face different giants in our lives. Right. It may not be a physical giant like Brother Caleb and Joshua and Brother David. But there will be giants that we will have to face in our lives. The giants of discouragement. The giants of finances or college or cancer or sickness or doubt. And the truth is we can defeat them. We cannot defeat them ourselves. We've got two options when it comes to giants, when we face giants. We can either allow them to rule over us, as the other ten did over them, they're doing or we choose to be like Caleb and Joshua. And we can let confident faith arise and courage, courageous faith arise. As Paul told Timothy in 2 Timothy, For God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and love and of sound mind. Amen. As, as, as Will said this morning, we were talking about perfect love, cast out fear. And he mentioned this. Fear is not from God. Amen. Amen. Fear where you are afraid of something or afraid to move forward uh, where you are afraid that you can't do it. It's not from God, but it's from the enemy. Right. Because God has given us, not given us a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. We all 
also know this. Uh, the Bible says in Philippians 4 13, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. That can't mentality, that fear mentality, is not of God because the Word of God says, I can. Say that with me. I can. That was the faith that Brother Caleb had. It was an I can faith. It was a, I don't have a spirit of fear, but a power and a love and a sound mind. Right. It's time the church get confident again. Yeah. It's time that the church get courageous again. Amen. To stand up against the enemies yeah. that we face. The spiritual enemies. There's no reason for the church to be quivering. Yeah. Jesus said that if I had built my church upon this rock, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. You know, those things look pretty bad for the church in 2021. Can I tell you something? The church of God is not going anywhere. Amen. I don't care what laws of Washington passes. I don't care what Joe Biden or Kamala Harris or any other government leader does. I don't care what Black Lives Matter says. I don't care what coronavirus does. The church is not going anywhere in God.
even into his 80s. You know what? We need more men like Brother Caleb. Amen. We need more men and women of God yes, Lord. like Brother Caleb that's willing to say, I'm committed to him through the good of the man. I'm going to be confident in the work. No matter what looks, uh, uh, what, what's going on out there in the world, no matter what may be happening to me, no matter what is uh, going on, I'm going to be confident in his work. I know the gospel will perform what he said that he will do. God's never broken a promise since the creation of man, and God is going to start with you. I will not play it right. But also, he had courageous faith. He had to face many obstacles in life, many giants. I think about us talking about fathers. You know what I think about as a giant that you face as fathers? Raising your children. Amen. Amen. All the dads in here, the moms in here say, what? Amen. Amen. There's some giants when it comes to raising your children that you're going to face. That's right. But you know what I learned? The Bible says if you need wisdom, ask for wisdom. Amen. Amen. That's right. For them things that you face, you ain't facing them alone. That's right. Do you think Caleb, as he thought about facing those giants and claiming that mountain, he says, I believe the Lord's going to be with me yeah. and help me to drive them out of the, of the land. You're not facing these things alone. You're not doing it in your own strength. And that's why you can have courageous faith because you know that the Lord is with me. That's why Paul said, I can do all things through Christ. Amen. Woo! I encourage you. Be committed to the Lord. Yeah, that's right. I encourage you. Have confident faith in his word. And have courageous faith with every giant that you face. When you stand your feet all over the house, wait for me. Come on. Hallelujah. Amen. They're going to begin to sing this evening. Can I, I want to ask you this as I close. Are you committed to the Lord? Truly. And if I was preaching that sermon, did, did the Holy Spirit break your heart? about commitment unto him. That, I, that, I, that I'm not where I need to be. I'm not committed. I'm not as sold out like I used to be. I've allowed other things to get my attention. And I'm not committed to him the way that I used to be. Maybe you're in here tonight and you backslid. That you, you strayed away from the Lord and you say, tonight I want to recommit my life unto him. Maybe you're facing a giant right now. Have your heart been filled with fear because of a call that you received from the doctor or a call that you received from a son or a daughter or another family member and you're afraid of what tomorrow might hold? Well, let me remind you of who holds tomorrow. Hallelujah. Come lay that fear down because God doesn't want you to carry it. He didn't give you that spirit and he doesn't expect you to dwell in it. Right. Right. Have courage and have confidence have forgiveness. As we close tonight, if you need special prayer, come. I want to pray for you. If you need to come and get in this altar and pray about something that the Lord has spoken to you, would you come tonight as we sing this evening, as we sing the altar?